Welcome to another episode of Barkman Saturdays. Instead of doing another um, quality animated film like I've been doing the last couple weeks, I decided to shelve that idea because, quite frankly, The Land Before Time deserves more time and effort to be put into it than I usually do for this show. Because it usually just ends up being very much a vlog format where I give my opinions. And The Land Before Time, I think, deserves a more quality review effort to be put behind it. Though, sadly, this series is getting yet another sequel. Why, I don't know. It, it Just let it die. The Land Before Time does not need 14 movies in, in its um, ranks. Plus, there's a TV show and the video games. It's just, just... Just let it die, okay? Stop ruining my nostalgia. So I decided to take a look at Men in Black 3 this week. And while it's better than the second movie... It's still not the kind of movie I really wanted, to be honest. I think the series with Miroff had just died after two, because Men in Black 3 is very much a, a whole series of plot holes when you get right down to it. I suppose you could argue that it fits in with the comedic nature of Men in Black 1, and that there's it's not meant to be taken seriously. It's just a goofy sci-fi comedy, but you really do have to wonder how the whole basic plot works here, because we have Jay with these time fracture headaches because he was there, during the whole fight with Boris with Agent K in the past, the problem is that this doesn't make sense. When Agent J gets out of the truck, van, I'm sorry, at the end of the movie, the young Agent J, he's like four or five years old. But if you look at the birth certificate in the first movie, he was born in October of 1969, meaning he was born after the events of this movie takes place, and the past events take place, so he couldn't have been witness to them. So the whole time pressure headache thing would not exist. Therefore, there'd be no way for anyone to know that Boris had done any time travel. There's also other small questions you can ask, like, where is the other time travel device? Because if Boris succeeded and left Earth, then he would never would have traveled back in time in the first place. So he wouldn't have still had the device. Um, and on and on and on, I'm sure you could keep going. Like, who recruited Jay if Agent K no longer existed? Because in the first movie, Zed basically questions... K's decision to even try and recruit him into the MIB, because they go for the best of the best of the best from the various military branches. So why exactly would any other agent recruit Jay, considering that the movie reveals that K had a, some, at least some personal motivations for why he would want Jay in the Men in Black? Well, Zed and other agents probably couldn't give a damn about how good Jay was as a cop for the NYPD. Um... Maybe they, maybe the other agent was just as impressed, but we don't know who this agent was. I guess it's not overall important to the plot somewhat in comparison to the whole he wasn't born yet thing, but it still bugs me a bit when I think about it. Um, I guess the movie does try and catch, catch the old um, partnership dynamic from the first movie, but this also feels like a misstep in my opinion somewhat. Because the second movie showed that Jay had gotten just as Jade as K had been, basically. So what made him shift back to being the Jay of the first movie? I mean, I, I realized they wanted to catch the whole lightning in a bottle with the partnership from the first movie, but you really can't after you've broken it. Once you've broken the bottle, you got to stick with that broken bottle. You can't just reverse things because it's convenient. The way this movie plays out, it basically only makes sense if you put into an alternate universe where Jay was born earlier and re still recruited, but wasn't recruited by K. I mean, I realize that alternate universes aren't exactly an uncommon thing with a lot of cartoon series and whatnot, but then it makes you question why it's called Men in Black 3 and has Will Smith in it, because there's no reason not to have just new characters altogether if you're going to do the whole alternate universe thing going on. I don't know. On one hand, it's nice to see another. It's nice to see another Men in Black movie. On the other hand, it doesn't make any sense at all for the whole the whole movie's basic plot with all the plot hole issues. Well, I guess it's a better viewing experience than the second one. So, I guess if you're a fan of the series, check it out. You don't expect anything too great. So next time, then. See ya. And just because you see a black man driving in a nice car does not mean it's stolen. I stole that one, but not because I'm black.